also have as a fallback, which is a safety net, and it's still a limited palette, it's still a master palette, using sepia and sanguine, but I would prefer to keep this very simple into white black on brown paper. Um, I have these emery boards, and you can use a piece of sandpaper or those sanded sharpeners especially for this. I like emery boards because I can just throw them away when they've uh, served their purpose. And what we do is take and sharpen our charcoal and use the dust that comes off of it also for the toning that we'll be doing later. But we just want to lay it flat on one side, keep it that way. See how it, all this dust comes off? And then we have an edge that works for us as a broad edge, like so, or we turn it and have a sharp edge this way. So with one charcoal, we get a lot of effects. With these broken pieces back here, I can just use those for really broad areas, as you see here, little broken pieces that can fill in uh, an area. Um, we use a chamois cloth, and use a real chamois cloth. There are these synthetic chamois cloths that you can get at the AutoZone place, but they're not really very good, and they won't work for what we're doing. This is an actual chamois cloth, and we use it for toning, for smearing around the charcoal. Uh, it's an invaluable drawing tool. You have to have this, and the darker the better. And then we'll also use the kneaded eraser, and a kneaded eraser um, is very pliable, as you see, and where does the charcoal go? I'm always amazed by this. I don't, I don't know how this works. But as you work it and knead it, the uh, charcoal will disappear in there. And then we use this as a drawing tool, mainly, rather than uh, to take away mistakes. Now we want to approach this in a very painterly, relaxed, fluid way. And at this point, you'll be wanting to go for that shape mat. Now remember, we have a tone here already that we can lift with an eraser. But I'd rather you not do that right now, just let the dark speak for now. So we'll be looking for that shape map right now. The shape map, if I squint my eyes, is something that we should see even from life. We squint our eyes way down, and when I squint my eyes at a real person or a real dog or whatever I'm looking at, you know, whatever I'm looking at, it, no matter if it's a still life, squinting down and trying to simplify everything completely is going to give you a, another roadmap, if you will. So we have all these geometric shapes going on here, and that's good. Now I want to look for shadow shapes and the shape map that will be dark against light. And if you've set up the light well, and if you have a good photo reference, or if you have set up the light in your studio, or if you've picked a good spot outside, you will see this definite shape map. And it's key to making the thing look three-dimensional. So here we go. I'll start, and here is a little more complicated. So I'll start here. There's a kind of a horseshoe shape here that defines this head. And I'll just start, I think I already see that uh, it will tell me if I'm off in drawing too. So I'll make my adjustments as I go. It's real organic. Usually I try to work more in angles, but this is a little more organic looking. And then I've got another little interesting, another little paisley shape right here. This little ball of the head. And I probably should have simplified this a little bit, just let these be one big shape, but I didn't. So now I have this little Y shape. And I'll kind of, and then I've got this little dark shape here. Let's just go ahead and put that in there. And then this seems to be sort of a dark shape here. I'm trying not to get carried away with what this is that I'm looking at yet. And my head is telling me that I'm just making preparations. We're not doing anything real yet. All right. 
there's now there's other shapes and what you would do at this point is start looking for the secondary shape map where you just keep particularizing through the drawing throughout the drawing until the very end you're looking for shapes they start out to be big shapes and they just keep being these shapes and it's the way the shapes fit together like a puzzle you assign every shape a value you assign every shape a hue if you're painting and drawing we're concerned with value but every shape has a value and we must compare the shape the size of it the way it fits together with the other shapes around it and we must compare the value range of it. Is it lighter, is it darker? And you just keep making these little puzzle pieces fit together until you have finished drawing.